Live from WNDS-TV, this is News Now at 7. Arraigned from his hospital bed, this Plastow man is charged in connection with his girlfriend's death. Hurricane Isidore, a possible threat to Gulf Coast states. And charges of corporate fraud against Adelphia's top executives. Those are some of the headlines that we are following this Monday night. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us. I'm Dan Kleffler. And I'm Katie Brace. Topping our newscast tonight, a Plasto man faces second-degree murder charges in connection with the shooting death of his living girlfriend. 21-year-old Joseph Sautel was arraigned today at Lawrence General Hospital. He's accused of the shooting death of 19-year-old Crystal Sheehan. The incident happened last Thursday night at their Plasto apartment. According to authorities, Sautel shot Sheehan before turning the gun on himself. No word yet on a possible motive. The victim's infant is being held in protective custody. That mother who was caught on videotape abusing her daughter pleads not guilty in an Indiana courtroom today. She's charged with a felony charge of battery to a child. If convicted, Madeline Toogood could face a maximum sentence of three years in prison. The little girl will remain in temporary foster care while Child Protection Services decides who should care for that girl. Now, the head of the county office says that they will look at requests from her relatives and outline requirements for the mother to resume custody. Too good. We'll be back in court on October 7th. Well, Mr. Massachusetts police arrest a suspected kidnapper. John LaValle is accused of abducting an 11 year old Lemonster girl last week. He got the girl into his car, then let her off in the neighboring town of Lunenburg. LaValle's no last known address was in Lunenburg. The 39 year old will be arraigned tomorrow. A Vermont man is facing murder charges in the Granite State. Cy Waters is accused of shooting 19 year old Corey Brink who's also from Vermont. It happened yesterday at a West Lebanon housing project. A motive not yet been determined, but friends of Brink said that he was involved in an argument between two men over drugs. Manchester police continue to crack down on prostitution in the Queen City. They made five arrests Friday night. 20-year-old Christopher Delore, 33-year-old Matthew Zola, 39-year-old Fadil Delula, and 33-year-old Gaizo Mione, as well as 23-year-old Jose Araba Santos, were all arrested in an undercover sting operation. Well, this actually is in response to citizens' complaints in that neighborhood, and that's the area of Merrimack and Lincoln Street. Um, since these complaints came in, we've conducted several sting operations over the last couple months. And our most recent sting operation, which was Friday night into Saturday morning, uh, netted five additional arrests. Well, all five men were charged with solicitation to prostitution. The founder of Adelphia Communications, along with his two sons and two former executives of Adelphia, are indicted on charges of conspiracy, securities fraud, and wire fraud. John Regas and his sons were arrested in July for allegedly hiding more than $2 billion in liabilities from investors. Now, they're being named in more than 40 civil lawsuits, including one that the company filed that day of their arrest. The Regas father and his sons were released on $10 million bail each. Lawyers for the five former executives deny that their clients committed any wrongdoings. Members of Tyco's board supposedly knew about controversial loan packages. They had previously testified they weren't aware of any loans given to executives. Well, this new information was published in today's New York Times. Tyco employee also claims board members pressured her to change meeting minutes. The changes made it appear the loans were not approved. Tyco International is suing former CEO Dennis Kozalski and several other former executives. They're accusing the men of borrowing and never repaying millions of dollars. Logan Airport is deploying its newest high-tech weapon in the war on terrorism. And a New Hampshire company is behind that help. News Now's Christina Chatelian reports. It's the newest weapon against terrorism, and it's the first time it's being used at an airport in the United States. This authentication technology has been in place for five months as a test at Logan Airport Terminal E. Now the software is being used for screening airport employee IDs before being issued airport badges. The special technology checks for expiration date symbol authenticity and runs checks, setting off alerts if the ID is fake. 225,000 travelers were screened, and according to Art McDeed of Imaging Automation, they discovered hundreds of ID problems. Some of the documents, though, were fraudulent. Some, we caught hundreds of bad documents. Now, bad documents can mean expired documents as well. People who are traveling, not, maybe not even knowingly, with an expired document. And you're not allowed to travel with expired documents. So that was certainly the largest uh, uh, number of uh, alerts that were generated. Um, but there were also some real forgeries, such as passports that were missing, um, the features that are supposed to be present, say, under uh, infrared lighting. Or they might have some tampering that was showing up inside the, uh, inside the laminates. 
Here at Imaging Automation in Bedford, New Hampshire, you can see how quickly this process works. Simply by taking a passport and scanning it in just a few seconds, they can tell whether it's passed or failed. Now, CEO Bill Talheimer says that they're hoping to expand this product in other areas across the United States. Logan was testing several different types of technologies. As you, uh, for the last five months, they selected several different types, biometric technologies. And I think as a result of the field trials having been completed and the complete endorsement of Logan Airport, that in fact, uh, the other airports will, uh, will, uh, will want to uh, uh, employ our technology. For WNDS News Now, I'm Christina Chatalian. All right, and still ahead on News Now at 7, the latest on Hurricane Isidore, downgraded from a hurricane, but still a serious concern taking aim at the Gulf Coast. OT to knock off the Kansas City Chiefs. We'll have all the details a bit later on in sports. Also, discussing Homeland Security at the University of New Hampshire. We'll have that complete story on News Now at 7. In New Hampshire, Jean Shaheen failed to fix the school funding crisis. In Washington, John Sununu won millions in education funding for New Hampshire schools and passed historic education reforms. He won vital funding to reduce class size and increase teacher training. And Sununu voted to give localities more control over their schools. Jean Shaheen, she failed our children. John Sununu, making a difference in education, fighting for better schools. Attention drivers, this special announcement is for you. For over 40 years, when you heard McMulkin, you thought Chevrolet. Now, when you hear McMulkin, think Cadillac. Greater Nashua's best-known Chevrolet dealer is now adding Cadillac to its huge inventory. At the all-new McMulkin Chevrolet Cadillac, you can drive off in the most stylish, rugged, and classic cars, trucks, and SUVs on the road. The all-new McMulkin Chevrolet Cadillac in the Automotive Village in Nashua and on the web at McMulkinChevrolet.com. McMulkin Chevrolet Cadillac will be there. Welcome back, everyone. Homeland Security and attacking terrorism abroad was the focus of a special seminar. The University of New Hampshire hosted these discussions. News Now's Eric Shiner was there and has this report. The University of New Hampshire's Justice Works program held a conference with former Senator Gary Hart, New Hampshire Attorney General Philip McLaughlin, and Professor Thomas Trout as they discussed the changes America faces since the terrorist attacks over a year ago and what the country can expect in the future four principal threats to our security. Uh, obviously, biological weapons, smallpox and so on, chemical weapons, uh, nuclear weapons, perhaps the most devastating, but also the cyber threat, the use of the new age of information and computers to take down uh, structures and the critical infrastructure of this country. Among the items discussed is how the government and American citizens can work together for better protection and how to get used to necessary changes as the nation continues to put tighter security into effect. For me, the most important thing, or one of the most important things, not at any cost, but at a lot of cost, to the way we conduct ourselves is the necessity of stability. One of the main topics of today's conference was trying to find the right balance between minimizing America's risk of a terrorist attack without infringing on the rights of its people. A new dilemma that faces lawmakers and citizens in the upcoming years. We need to find a way to get traction on this and to find ways to establish um, the maintenance of, of law, order, and civilization in the face of the potential for terrible, terrible harm to come to this country in the future. A future that includes an America that must make decisions on not only how to defend itself, but also, as in the case with Iraq, when to attack. This is not the civil war, but it is a defining moment. And this is when Americans either succeed or fail. In Durham, Eric Shiner, WNDS News Now. All right, Eric, thank you. President Bush is uh, urging Congress to pass a budget. The president spoke at a fundraising event in New Jersey taking the opportunity to encourage fiscal responsibility. He uh, had criticized Congress for not passing a budget. The president saying that not having a spending bill is not an excuse to spend freely. What we need in Washington is fiscal responsibility, fiscal sanity. We need to set priorities with your money. And the most important priority I have is to defend the homeland, is to defend the homeland from a bunch of killers who hate America. 
The president is making several fundraising stops this week. Today's uh, stop brought this yearly fundraising total to almost $120 million. Well, locally now, Craig Benson is speaking about why the income tax, in his opinion, won't work in the state of New Hampshire, criticizing Mark Fernald's plan. Cabletron founder Craig Benson says that income tax is not the answer to solving the state's education funding problem, citing the need to save and reduce government spending, while Mark Fernald says an income tax would be the best solution. Without an income tax by 2020, we would spend $5.8 billion. But with an income tax, that number would rise to $8.5 billion. Under Mr. Benson's plan, the vast majority of households will pay higher property taxes than they do today. We pay the highest property taxes in the country as it is. It's dead wrong. It's not a good way to pay for a state. It's certainly not a good way to pay for education. And we think that needs to change. Uh, and we think that's going to reflect in the numbers in the next several weeks. Obviously, November 5th is the number we'd like to see the most kids so busy trying to get the word out that I guess I uh, haven't spent a whole lot of time. Now the Fernalds camp. And moving on, Christy Todd Whitman, administrator for the EPA and former governor of New Jersey, made a trip to the Granite State. She's showing support for the state's Republican Party. Whitman addressed a group in Manchester showing her full support for GOP gubernatorial hopeful Craig Benson and U.S. Senate candidate John Sununu. Whitman urged voters to go to the polls on November 5th to vote on issues including homeland security and education. I can think of no better way to put a lie to what those terrorists tried to do to this country on September 11th of 2001 when they tried to disrupt our way of life and our form of government than ensuring that we have a good turnout, the best turnout ever in this election cycle, and that we elect Republicans to the House and to the Senate, to the gubernatorial and to the legislative races to send a message that we are behind our president. The and earlier in the day, Whitman was in Maine and then Portsmouth speaking at the Little Harbor School discussing children's health issues. All right, still ahead on News Now, Al Caprillion joins us with a look at our work week forecast. Stay with us. Introducing the new 2003 all-wheel drive Subaru Legacy Wagon Special Edition. $2,400 in special options, 16-inch alloy wheels, all-season radio tires, power dual moonroof, halogen fog lights, custom leather trim, and much more. Standard vehicle price, $20,195. Special edition package, $2,400. Special edition discount, $1,500. You pay only $21,095. See your local New England Subaru dealer for additional discounts. You in on family fun with a great pool table from Seasonal Specialty Stores in Amherst, New Hampshire. Choose from Brunswick, Olhausen, Gandhi, and many others. In stock and ready to try before you buy. Complete your room with a matching bar, stools, or another great game table from New England's best selection. Lowest prices are guaranteed. That's Seasonal Specialty Stores, Amherst, New Hampshire. And welcome back, everyone. We're accustomed to seeing the crash test of cars hitting various objects, but there's a new virtual test. It saves the car and lets researchers test seatbelts and car seat safety. CNN's Julie Valles has more. It takes less than a second. Here, we'll slow it down for you so you can see what happens in this simulation. Not a simulation of a high-powered, high-speed collision. Instead, this crash simulates what happens to a person stopped at a stop sign is hit from behind by a car traveling about 8 miles per hour. But unlike the high-speed tests and bumper tests where the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety uses real cars, this is a virtual crash. This is our newest piece of equipment, a very sophisticated device that allows us to simulate the forces that occur inside a compartment of a vehicle during a crash without actually crashing a vehicle. The technology was designed to test aircraft, but for a research group which needs to run numerous tests at high and low speeds, the sled was a perfect find. We can literally run the equivalent of dozens of crashes without crashing cars, and we can do it a lot cheaper and a lot faster. We can run 10, 12, sled tests in one day. Vehicle seats, seat belt restraint systems, and child safety seats are all evaluated using the virtual crash test technology. A rating system for the performance of the seats has yet to be created, but as the system develops, ratings will be established. 
For now, the Institute is looking at the new designs of some vehicle head restraint systems. They're studying whether the active designs reduce whiplash in real-world crashes. In Rutgersville, Virginia, I'm Julie Belise. Hurricane Isidore being blamed for one death, although it has now been downgraded to a tropical storm. Mexican officials confirmed that at least one person died from that storm, which tore into the Yucatan Peninsula over the weekend. Hundreds of thousands of people are still without power. Now, trees have been ripped up, roofs torn apart. Forecasters are warning, though, that Isidore could regain hurricane strength tomorrow and head towards the U.S. Gulf Coast. And will we see any of those effects up here? Will any more rain in the forecast? Well, it won't be until late Friday or Saturday, Katie. So if you want to do some running, you want to do it before uh, Friday morning or before. If we get any effects of this, it'll be just some tropical moisture tail end of the week or start next week. And that still is not definite. We'll see it after the break. At Surplus Office Equipment, we're having a huge warehouse sale Thursdays and Fridays from 9 to noon, 3 September only. With 4,000 square feet of office furniture, it's the good, the bad, and the ugly. Desks, vertical files, lateral files, plan files, bookcases, cubicles, and much more. Buy just one or furnish your entire office and save 20% off on all items you pick up cash and carry. Stop by and see what you can walk away with. Located at 400 Bedford Street on the Spring Street side in Manchester. Surplus Office Equipment difference buying a car at Stan in Nashua and it starts with the people. It's about treating you with respect and designing our dealership around your needs and lifestyle. Right now we've got the offer of the year on the all-new 2002 Saturn View rated number one for safety in its class. Own it for under $19,000 with free maintenance for two years and free gas for 2003. Customers rate Saturn top in sales satisfaction and you'll see for yourself at Saturn in Nashua. At Saturn in Nashua we won't need to sell you a car, you'll sell yourself the car. And now, weather with Al Caprillion. Good evening, everyone. Around the region tonight, it's 61. Sue Snyder in Canterbury. Steve Flagg, 64. Manchester, guarantee high today was 77. We'll see if I got it tonight. 70 from Travis and Derry. 70, Salem. David Hunt, 68 in Pelham. Carol Manser has 68 in Lunderry tonight. It's 64 from Pam Green in Merrimack, New Hampshire. 66 from Jake Adams in West Townsend. Mimi has 70 in Lowell. Stephanie has 66 in Shrewsbury tonight, filling in for Merle, 73 down in Stoneham, and 73 from Bridgewater, from Clare. Taking a look now at the jet stream, we have a trough here, and this trough is going to be bringing some cool to cold weather, moving off towards the east, and we are going to see some dry weather coming up for tomorrow. This cold front here will be moving off towards the east, and uh, will bring, again, some reinforcing cool weather for Wednesday and Thursday. Highs tomorrow will be in the 70s, 60s in northern New England, 80s across the Gulf Coastal states and Florida, and 50s across northern Wisconsin. Here's the map. Valor Wednesday, as Dan told you in that story before weather, that looks like Isidore will emerge into a hurricane again over 80, uh, ocean waters, 80 degrees plus here in the Gulf. That will fuel her to, again, the greatest chance to strike we'll see will be along the Gulf Coastal states. Winds down to 50 as she tracked across the Yucatan Peninsula. Gusts to 65, movement northeast at 3. Eventually may turn more north, and it looks like it will re-intensify over as it passes off the Yucatan Peninsula. The greatest threat will be the Louisiana coast here, low threat Florida, and also uh, some threat along the Texas coast, but the greatest threat will be Louisiana, and much above normal this summer here in the northeast. We had a great summer, didn't we? Tonight, clearing a beautiful sunset here at the station with some high clouds. Patchy fog, cooler and less humid. 40s in the valleys. Some of that fog could be dense with the heavy rain we had early this morning. Partly to mostly sunny tomorrow, 69 to 74 degrees. And there is your three-day. And we do have a quiz for you coming up tonight. It looks like we may rain here late Friday into Saturday. Long range, a cold front comes through Saturday night. Mike, Dan, and Katie, and that may clear us out on Sunday. A little bit earlier to say if any of Isidore's moisture may move this far north if the jet goes up into southern Canada. Where are the vertical rays on the uh, first day of fall? Where are they located? We'll have a quiz. That's the quiz tonight. Is that's the the ge point. Geographic as far as where they're striking the earth. Yes, right on the, on the uh, vernal equinox. All right, very good. We'll have the, and we'll have the answer tonight at 10. Yes. Thank you. Okay. And we can still call the Pats champions. You can? Yeah. Sure can. <laughs> Might be able to all the way up until January. Talk about the Pats in a second. First, 
I'm going to mention the future of one of New Hampshire's premier landmarks, and it seems the Red Sox season won't end without a bit of controversy. Pedro Martinez wins his 20th game and says he's done for the year, but is he? I'll explain, and what a start to the season for the New England Patriots. Unbeaten after three games after yesterday's dramatic victory over the Chiefs. A complete recap of all the day's sports coming up next. I co-founded Cabletron in the garage just like this, and I always use this same old three-legged metal desk because I refuse to let people waste money on things that don't improve the bottom line. I'll take that same conservative philosophy to State House. We'll cap spending, and I'll veto a sales or income tax. By streamlining and reforming government, we can solve the education crisis. The career politicians haven't done it. I'll make sure we do. Buying or selling a home can mean the weight of the world on your shoulders. A Remax agent can lighten that load. Averaging more than 13 years' experience, Remax agents have the knowledge and expertise to free you of paperwork and do everything in their power to make hassles disappear. Our agents work the kind of practical magic that lets you take your life to the next level. When you're ready to buy or sell, call Remax. And now, sports with Mike de Blasi. A win is a win is a win. It doesn't have to be pretty because all victories count the same in the standing. So the Patriots can sit a bit easier today with a 3-0 record despite nearly giving away yesterday's 41-38 victory over the Chiefs. The man of the day for New England, Troy Brown. Number 80, hauling in a team record 16 catches for 176 yards and this third quarter score that rallies the Pats from a 17-9 deficit to tie the game. Rookie Daniel Graham hauling in his first career NFL score, giving his club the lead early in the fourth quarter. And then David Patton shows off his skills with a nice catch and race 38 yards to the house. Home team up 31-17 at this point. After Casey cuts the lead in half, Antoine Smith bullies his way for 42 yards and a touchdown. And with just four minutes left and leading by 14, the game seems in hand for Bill Belichick's boys. Not so fast. The Chiefs cross the goal line twice more, including a final plunge to pay dirt from Priest Holmes as time expires. 180 yards rushing, two TDs for Holmes. We head to overtime. And there, the Pats make sure there would be no collapse. Winning the coin toss, New England drives 53 yards on nine plays, capped off by Adam Vinatieri's 35-yard game-winning field goal. Mr. Automatic now a perfect 8 for 8 this season, and the Patriots a perfect 3-0. and I think the most important thing is to go out and win. And we all realize that, I think the defense realizes that, hey, we got to work on some things, you know? And I think the offense has to realize that, hey, there's days when we're going to have to pick the defense up. And the defense knows that there's going to be days when they're going to have to pick us up. So, um, you know, we're 3-0, and, 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 and that's the reality. 3-0 and is a pretty good way to start things off. The Pats next play Sunday afternoon against the Chargers in San Diego. For a look at all the hits, highlights, and heroes of the Sunday gridiron, here are moving pictures with sound in our point after. <laughs> To the players, reality is one against one, move and counter move, helmet to helmet. Nowhere is this conflict more evident than at the fringe of battle where the receiver and cornerback match glares. Here, cunning and speed determine the victor. One on one, the battle where the loser bleeds alone on an open field.
week three in the NFL wrapping up tonight with the Buccaneers hosting the St. Louis Rams in Tampa Bay. As the Red Sox wind down their season, a bit of controversy is brewing. After winning his 20th game of the year yesterday, Pedro Martinez saying he will not make another start. The Sox A's telling reporters, quote, that's it, I'm done. To make another start would be greedy and I have nothing left to prove, end quote. However, Sox skipper Grady Little announcing that he expects Pedro would want to take his final turn in the rotation. That would come against Tampa Bay on Thursday night. Smart Money says prospect Josh Hancock will get the ball and that Martinez will sit in the dugout and cheer him on. Meanwhile, Boston beating the Orioles 13-2 in Baltimore yesterday. In his bid for a batting title, Manny Ramirez 2 for 4 at the plate, upping his average to 346, one point behind the Royals' Mike Sweeney. Pedro improving to 20 and 4 with a league best 2.26 ERA, allowing two runs on seven hits over six innings. Red Sox break the game open in the seventh, scoring five times. Johnny Damon drives a two run homer, the first of his two jacks on the day, and Nomar Garcia Parra belts his 23rd long ball of the year. Trot Nixon also goes deep in the win. Tim Wakefield on the hill tonight as the Red Sox go for a four game sweep. I'll have highlights for you at 10 o'clock. It has been one of the area's featured attractions since 1906, but has Rockingham Park held its last race? That's the question that will be answered over the next few months. The Rock's ownership group will view business plans and decide whether the track can overcome its recent financial struggles. Though the live racing season is over, the Rock will continue its full card of simulcasting racing, trade shows, and bingo. The future of the Rock seems to lie in the hands of the state legislature, which has thus far refused to allow the addition of slot machines. WNDS Sports will follow this story closely and provide an in-depth look at the Rock in the coming weeks. Finally, the charity golf season is winding down, but whether, whenever there's a need to tee it up for a good cause, you can count on the WNES Sports Department to deliver. This afternoon at Derrickfield Country Club in Manchester, Duffers, Hackers, and Wannabe Tigers coming out to support the Southern New Hampshire University women's basketball program. The third annual Penman Classic on the links, and thanks to the generosity of today's players, as well as the support of several key corporate sponsors, including Merchants Automotive Group and U.S. Airways, the SNHU women's team will get the chance to take a once-in-a-lifetime hoops journey across the Atlantic. We have a young lady that came to us from Spain, and I think it's pretty important if she can play in front of her family. And just the benefits of going over with the whole team, you know, international, uh, meeting different people, and it takes a you know, good amount of money to do it the right way, and that's the way we want to do it. Ted Panos, Jim Finnell, sports writer of the Union Leader newspaper, and myself out there supporting Dennis Mason. Nice. Now, how many uh, golf tournaments do you think you've done this whole summer? Not enough. It's oh, never no. enough. Never. All right. Keep it coming. <laughs> we'll still head on news now. We take a look at the three day forecast. Hey, I think it's about time we talked. You need to get out more, and these guys fly to more Caribbean islands than anyone. So go. Go now. Do your kids say the funniest things? If so, they could be your ticket to meeting America's most beloved comic, Bill Cosby. 98.7 The Bay and WNDS are giving away a family four-pack of premium seats and backstage passes for Cos's October 25th show. But your kids need to be funny to win. If you have a video or audio tape of your kids saying the funniest thing, send it to I Want to Meet the Cause, care of the Whittemore Center, 128 Main Street, Durham, for a chance to win the ticket. Bill Cosby at the Whittemore Center. Your chance to win tickets starts here. Mr. K, what do you have for us? I have some good weather for you, Dan. If you're going to be out enjoying the weather before work tomorrow, it's low 70s. Wednesday looks good. Some high clouds coming in Thursday. Next chance of any rain will be later Friday into next Saturday, but that's still days away. The short term, three of you can get out and enjoy it before work. That looks nice. Well, you know, and also that's good weather right now to go out and check out the Leafs as well because it's north of Concord, they're beautiful. beautiful. And so the trend is headed south. It's heading our Columbus way. Columbus weekend. So that's right. All right, thanks, Al. Well, that's all the time we have for News Now at 7. Make sure you join us back here at 10 o'clock. I'm Katie Bray. And I'm Dan Kleffler. Have a great night. focuses on mediumship and it focuses on those who've crossed over, but it's really a show about living your life here and today and to make the most of your relationships here.